Oh my God, Chris. Okay, but the first part of your video is a very good, very competent argument about the embodied mind and why we have to do philosophy as an embodied mind, which is really a, the position of this multidisciplinary um, discipline called cognitive science that includes cognition of philosophy, cognitive psychology, um, you know, neurology, anything, any thinking, any study of thought pretty much is the original uh, thing, but it's come down to studies of the mind as a, as a material real thing. Good argument there. You made a good argument. But when you go into free will, you need to at least understand what is really being argued. You use the compound statement saying that quantum mechanics, some people use quantum mechanics to argue against determinism and, and for free will. Well, that's a little bit of a tricky compound argument because it goes like this. Quantum mechanics does not argue or explain free will. Nobody can do that yet. There's hardly even any hint as to what it can be. But if we look for hints in the physical world, it's certainly not going to be in classical mechanics. You've shown that. We all know that. And there is some room for it in quantum mechanics. But that doesn't prove that the will is free. What is proved is that things are not deterministic. Okay, the argument that because it's mechanic, it should be deterministic, comes from science that's over a hundred years out of date. Nobody believes that science anymore. That argument that any system, because it's mechanistic and physical, should be deterministic, that no longer holds. Quantum mechanics proves in physical sciences, in physics, that that is not the case. Okay, that's what it proves. So there is no determinism. So you can't draw your argument against free will from a determinism that no longer exists. You need some other argument, right? You need some other argument because quantum mechanics shows that there isn't physical determinism. Oh, but my common sense says that there is, say so many people. It had to, if I'm bending over backwards, if I don't believe that. People have said the same thing about if they had to visualize a world without God. I don't know, try it. I didn't find it so hard. <laughs> I don't find it difficult to believe that there's some non-deterministic and uh, aspects to reality. Now, calling them random is confusing because random in classical science is different than random in quantum physics. Okay, for example, if you have interchanges that should be elastic, perfect, energy is exactly no friction, basically, nothing turns into heat. All the energy stays in that system. But, but you have some little tiny random, classically random amount, that it's not perfect. Then what will happen is the energy of the system will drift. It won't be conserved. The whole energy of the system will drift around and won't be conserved. But in quantum mechanics, even though you do, in fact, have this random little bit, energy is still conserved. So somehow the patterns are still being fulfilled. You know, the patterns of consistency that, that our common sense says the discrete and random nature and, and spontaneous nature would mean you couldn't have this. In fact, no, there's still conservation of energy. Okay. So, so there's a pattern. So that's what we really know about physics is that, yeah, we have reason to think that there really is a pattern. The, the mind is embodied, which means there's a physical pattern, and, and it follows or adheres to this physical pattern. But randomness is a kind of physical pattern. Doing one event and there's being seven, it's not infinite possibilities, right? We're, when we say about random, it's not like just totally random. You know, the electron doesn't turn into a chicken. It just maybe moves a little left or a little right. That's what's random. And is it really random? Well, I don't know. It depends on, again, how you interpret that term. In the multiverse version, it's not random. Every single possibility happens in proportion to its possibility. Now, why it collapses, why we don't experience it, that becomes the question. Why do the universes remerge? It's quite possible if universes merge that they would remerge. There might even be a force to make them remerge because, again, of conservation of energy type ideas. Okay. So none of these really require a conclusion um, that there can't be free will because see without the argument from classical mechanics which erroneously said that all mechanistic systems have to be now we actually use the word mechanistic to mean determined now but that all physical systems had to be purely mechanistic and this meant particular determinable futures based on just the inputs 
and no free will. Okay, that model, that model, okay, you can't use that because determinism, that kind of determinism failed in the lab. It failed in the lab. Sorry, it failed in the lab. But it still looks pretty much like that. Yeah, but we bend down underneath the surface of the water there and it failed in the lab. That's the end of that story, right? You know, you want to draw back to it, it's like people drawing back to the four elements after we knew the periodic table. You can do it, and there's sort of some truth to there being a difference between fire, earth, and water, and air. Those are like, yeah, okay, four different things. You know, you're writing a, a science fiction or a fantasy story, and you use these as your deities or whatever, it still makes enough sense. But we bend below the surface. We know, look, there is no physical determinism where we thought there was. What there is is statistical regularity. Given a million events, you can make characterizations about the million events. The single event, random. And you need to look into that two-slit experiment more, too, because it's not about the unpredictability. It's about the fact that the electron appears to go through both slits, unless you pay close enough attention to see which one it went through. That's the weird thing, that it seems to go through both slits. Okay, that's what is not, it's not just we can't predict. Now, your idea of the hidden variable theory that's that's what that's called where maybe there is a number we just can't see or there have been hidden variable theories usually you know they can have numbers that we'll never be able to know but the idea is that it's there and you model it that way well one most of those theories have been shown you know whole 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 categories of that kind of theory have been shown not to apply been proved not to apply don't work mathematically but the ones that are still maybe candidates please take a look at them they're even more bizarre than quantum mechanics. They're even in, in their theory, the photon is 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 somehow emerges from the screen it's going to land on. There's there's it re reclaims determinism, but it does not avoid jumping through any back hoops. And if you sit where I sit, holding on to determinism is the thing that's a backflip. Look at what you have to believe to believe that. First of all, nothing you've ever experienced was determined. Even you, you are a great tennis player, every time you serve a little bit different. There's always this little variable. That's your whole life trying to work on that variable and aim things. So you've never experienced it. And yet, and yet you're going to contradict all these other uh, you know, experimental repeatable facts, including the experience of your own uh, will. And but we're bending over backwards. No, you're the one that's bending over backwards to hold on to this intuition, which really, you know, does you no good. Now, I want to say this. What we really need is, there is no free will, there is no free anything. Everything is limited, everything is bounded in nature. Okay, so free is to be taken as a relative term, you know. Freer than what the rock has, for example. Okay. So the idea is there's intentionality. No, it's not totally unlimited. And it's not what we think. And it doesn't go on in this conscious part of our brain that's saying, I am me. Now, that's just watching the will like it watches your breathing and heart rate and it watches your temperature and it watches for your pain input. I mean, it's just a little reading monitor center. I, I believe most of the will is very much more distributed in the mind and also uh, more unconscious than we usually assume. So there's errors in the will. But to go after the idea that there is well in favor of determinism, well, that might have been enlightened at one time when all of this natural philosophy was pointing in that direction. And that's why so many great minds took that leap. But they were proved wrong. Okay? They were just proved wrong. You know what I mean? If you accept the way empirical science and the natural philosophy works, then there can't be a dispute. They were proved wrong by those kind of criterion. You could say, oh, but God told me, or oh, but I have a better intuition than that. But fine. But in, in physics, there's no, there's no question. They were proved wrong. Newton was proved wrong. Go to any scientist and say, was Newton's, uh, you know, equation the last story, you know, on force and mass and acceleration, how they relate? No, that was wrong. It didn't have the, it didn't have the uh, relativistic component, and it didn't take quantum mechanics into, into effect. It's no big deal, but it is wrong. There's no, there's no drawing those deterministic conclusions anymore. The determin so, what's your other argument? Quantum mechanics doesn't prove that there is will, but it does prove that there's no determinism in physics. Ultimately, there's just statistics that can look determined because you you have the law of averages. So you have the law of averages. Prove determinism with that.